Hi everyone, I'm Shui, a PhD student at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Today I'm going to present our paper From Holland to Quantum Entanglement and Back. It's a joint work with my advisor Jin Yi and a collaborator Zhu Guofu at Northeast Normal University. So let's first introduce Holland problems. It's a framework for counting problems. Such a problem is parameterized by a set of Boolean constraint functions, also called signatures. Each signature of right n is a map from the n-dimensional Boolean domain to any complex value. The input of such a, such a problem is a signature grid, which is a graph where each vertex is labeled by some signature. We consider all 0, 1 edge assignments, and each gives an evaluation, which is a product of all signature values among all vertices. And the output is the sum of all products over all possible edge assignments. So the Holland problem is the sum of a product computation. Let's see an example. So a perfect matching of a graph is a set of edges uh, in which for each vertex exa exactly one edge that is incident to it is picked. The constraint at each vertex can be represented by the following exact one function. Uh, such a function takes value 1 if the humming uh, weight of its input is 1, and it takes value 0 otherwise. So if we let the set f to be the set of all exact one functions, then the Holland problem parameterized by this signature set f is just the problem of counting perfect matchings. Why we are interested in Holland problems? It's a very expressive framework for counting problems. Many problems can be expressed by this framework, such as counting graph homomorphisms and counting constraint satisfaction problems. And also, as we just said, as we just said, counting matchings and counting profit matchings, and also counting Eulerian orientations. Uh, in addition, the computation of the partition functions for many models from statistical physics such as 6 words models and 8 words model models can also be expressed by Holland problems. And also, it's, pro it's proved that counting profit matchings cannot be expressed by counting graph homomorphisms. So, it's proved that the Holland framework are probably more expressive. For broad class of signature size, we want to classify the, com the complexity of the Holland problem parameterized by this signature side. Such a classific classification result is usually uh, in the form of a dichotomy theorem, which, is, which says that the Holland problem is either polynomial time computable or it's sharply hard. The sharply class is a quantitative version of the NP class. Note that by Lander's theorem, we know that there is no dichotomy for the Sharpie class in general. However, for some specific, specific uh, counting frameworks, such as counting graph homo homomorphisms and counting CSP, four complex dichotomies have been established. And even for these problems over general domain, there was a long sequence of works, and the dichotomy for counting graph homomorphisms was finally proved by Tsai, Chen, and Lu, and the dichotomy for counting CSP is finally proved by Tsai and Chen. These dichotomies are for these problems defined over general domains. However, for Holland problems, even restricted to Boolean domain, there are only limited results. First, if all signatures are symmetric or complex value, then there is a, there is a dichotomy. We see, a, we see a signature is symmetric if the function value of, of this signature only depends on the Hamming weight of its input. And if, if certain auxiliary unary signatures are assumed to be available, then there are dichotomy results. We, we see that these unary signatures are available means that the signature set is F always contains some unary signatures. We will give more details about these results later. And when all signatures are non-negative real value, real valued, a dichotomy was proved. So the goal is definitely to prove a complex dichotomy for all complex valued Holland problems. Well, Holland problems are connected with quantum uh, theory. 
In fact, Holland problems are synonymous with tensor networks in quantum theory. A signature grid is just a tensor network, and each signature is a tensor at, with edge inputs. The Holland value is obtained by contracting all edges. In this sense, a signature of rate n represents an uncubed state. In quantum theory, an uncubed state can be represented by a vector in the 2 to the power of n dimensional complex space. A core concept in quantum theory is entanglement. It's perhaps the most distinguishing uh, property that separates quantum physics and classical physics. So we see a qubit state is entangled uh, if it cannot be decomposed as a tensor product of single qubit states. And we see it's multi-parted entangled if it cannot be decomposed as a tensor product of single qubit states and two qubit states. And we see it's generally entangled if it, it cannot be decomposed at all. Well, uh, entanglement is an important resource in quantum computing and quantum information theory. And for different tasks, uh, different types of entanglement can be used. So we, we would like to classify them uh, under some quantum operations. One way to classify them is the classification of different types of entanglements under stochastic local operation with classical communication, also called slog equivalence. It was proposed by uh, Dio Widow and Thierry in 2000. And there are many results after that. Uh, two states are equivalent under slog means that uh, there exists uh, uh, some immutable two by two matrices uh, such that one state uh, psi can be obtained by performing the matrix mi on the s qubit of another state uh, phi. And for two qubit states, uh, there are two slug classes. Uh, for three qubit states, there are six slug classes. Uh, but for four and more qubits, there are infinitely many slug classes. Then the goal is try to uh, categorize, categorize these classes into uh, finitely many families uh, with common properties. In this paper, uh, we, we would like to explore the connections between the complexity classification of Holland problems and quantum entanglement theory. Uh, this question has two parts. The first part is that can we use knowledge from quantum entanglement uh, to get complexity dichotomy results for Holland problems? And the second part is that can we use knowledge from Holland problems to get results uh, for quantum entanglement? And particularly, uh, can we get results for the entanglement classification and the slog equivalence? The answer to the first question is known to be yes. Recently, Beckens applied knowledge from quantum theory uh, to get new dichotomy results for Holland problems. Let's, let's roughly describe Beckens' results. First, let's define an operation called projection. Let delta be a single qubit state. The projection of the s qubit of an n qubit state, psi, onto the single qubit state delta is defined as follows. Uh, this is the state of n minus 1 qubits. Here, a bar and b bar are complex conjugates of a and b, and these two states, uh, psi uh, sub i super 0 and psi sub i super 1, are states of the remaining n minus 1 qubits when the s qubit of, uh, of psi is set to 0 and 1 respectively. So after projection, uh, we get a state of n minus 1 qubits from a state of n qubits. Uh, we are particularly interested in projections onto the following four uh, states. These are the two computational basis states, uh, 0 and 1, and also uh, this, the, uh, these two Hadamard basis states, the plus state and the minus uh, state. Beckens approved the following entanglement result. Uh, let psi uh, be an n qubit state that exhibits multi-parted entanglement. We assume that n is larger or equal to 4. Then there exists some i such that by performing projection of the s qubit of psi onto a single qubit, onto a single qubit state, one of from these four states, such that the remaining state 
it's still a SK-based multi-party entanglement. So in other words, on the projections onto states of 0, 1, plus, minus, the multi-party entanglement can be preserved. Well, since, I, since a three-qubit state with multi-party entanglement is just a genuinely entangled three-qubit state, so by keep doing projections onto one of these four uh, states, we can eventually realize a genuinely entangled state. And this result is proved based on the following uh, result from quantum entanglement theory. It says that uh, by performing projections of, of, uh, of a genuinely uh, entangled state uh, onto some uh, single qubit states, we can realize an entangled two qubit state. This result was originally presented to show that any genuinely uh, entangled state uh, violates uh, some uh, Bell inequalities. So basically, Beckins improved this result from an entangled two-qubit state to a genuinely uh, entangled three-qubit state. Based on these quantum entanglement results, Beckins proved new dichotomy results for Holland problems. In the Holland framework, these four single-qubit states represent some unary signatures. And the Holland plus problem is defined by assuming that these four single-qubit states are available. And the Holland C problem is defined by assuming that uh, these two single qubit states 0 and 1 are available. So, if the signal site F does not contain a state exhibiting multi-party entanglement, then it's known that the Holland plus problem is tractable, means it's polynomial time computable. Otherwise, since the multi-party entanglement is preserved under projections onto these four uh, single qubit states, we know that a genuinely entangled three qubit state can be realized from F in the Holland plus framework. And based on this genuinely entangled three qubit state, a dichotomy was proved for Holland plus problems. Uh, later, this dichotomy was generalized to Holland C problems, first real valued by Tsai, Lu, and Xia, and then complex valued by Beckins. Now, in our paper, we want to consider that can we use knowledge from Holland problems to uh, get some new quantum entanglement results. So this is the other direction. And we consider the following uh, question, that why the multi-part multi entanglement is preserved under projections onto only uh, two single qubit states, 0 and 1. And we prove that uh, for, for n qubit state exhibiting multi-part entanglement, here we still assume that n is larger or equal to 4, and we assume that this state uh, psi uh, satisfies this property that the complex in the product between the state psi and the uh, all zero state is non-zero. And then, if 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 this state psi is not of these two particular forms, then we can show that the multi-party determinant is preserved and the projections onto zero and one. It means that there exists some i such that among these two states uh, obtained by performing uh, uh, projections of the ice qubit onto 0 or 1, we can realize states such that it, it exhibits a multi-party entanglement. Um, here, uh, by the uh, under slog uh, operation by this particular matrix n, we can always modify the state uh, size such that it satisfies the condition that the complex in the product is non-zero. And uh, all other conditions in this theorem are necessary to ensure that the preservation of a multi-party entanglement. Well, one can check that if the state psi is of the form uh, is of is of one of these two forms, then the preservation of multi-party entanglement does not hold. Now let's compare our entanglement result with Bacon's entanglement result. Uh, first, our result uh, is a general generalized Bacon's result. Uh, by considering only two, uh, by considering projections onto only two states, zero and one, and more importantly, our approach is in the other direction to Bacon's. Recall that Bacon's uh, proved new uh, entanglement results. Uh, recall that Bacon's used the uh, qu uh, quantum entanglement theory to uh, prove new dichotomies for Holland problems. Here, we use knowledge from Holland problems to get new quantum entanglement result. And the, the, this is a technique 
developed the Holland problems and is at the heart of the of a standard approach to build inductive uh, argument for Holland problems. Uh, one can refer to our another paper for more details. And also, our result can be applied to the classification of quantum entanglement and the slog equivalence. So let's see how it is applied. Recall that we want to uh, categorize infinitely many slog classes into finitely many uh, families with common properties. Well, depending on which property you want to use, there are many different approaches, approaches to classify them. One powerful approach that can possibly handle uh, states of a high number of qubits is by induction. In the inductive classification, we pick some i and we write the state psi uh, in this form. We assume that psi is a state of n qubits. And then the entanglement type of the original state psi can be defined according to the types of entanglements found in the linear span among these two states of n minus 1 qubits. These are states ob obtained by performing projections of the original state psi onto single qubit states 0 or 1. So this is why we consider why the multi-parted entanglement is preserved and uh, projections onto these two uh, particular states. And, uh, and definitely the entanglement uh, type in this linear span is closely related to the entanglement types of these two uh, states themselves. And uh, remember that our entanglement result gives a direct, direct relation between the entanglement types of the original state uh, psi and uh, these two states obtained by performing projections onto uh, 0 and 1. Let's see an example. We consider a 5 qubit state that exhibits multi parted entanglement, and we want to classify this state. First, by performing slog with this matrix uh, n, we can modify this state psi such that it satisfies the complex in the product condition. And then, if this state psi has, has this particular form, that is equivalent to the uh, greenberg horn zellinger state. Otherwise, by our entanglement result, we know that there exists some i such that by performing projection, projection of the s qubit of psi onto the single qubit 0 or 1, we can realize states such that it exhibits multiplied entanglement. Then, in order to classify the states uh, psi, we only need to consider the possible entanglement types of these two states obtained by performing projections onto uh, the state, state 0 or state, or state 1. And among these two states, by our result, we know that uh, at least one exhibits the multiplied entanglement. So, compared to considering all entanglement types, this already eliminates many cases. And then we consider that can we apply our new quantum entanglement result uh, back to the back to Holland problems. And uh, we proved the following uh, dichotomy for real value of Holland problems, uh, where a signature of all the everything is available. Again, if the signature site f does not contain a state exhibiting multiplied entanglement, then we know the problem is, is tractable, uh, means it's, it's, it's polynomial time computable. So otherwise, we know that uh, it can the signature site contains a state that exhibits multiparted entanglement. Then we consider why the multiparted entanglement is preserved and the projections onto only one state zero and the self-loop gadget using one of the bell state. Let's first define the self-loop gadget and then we will explain why we consider these two particular states. So uh, let phi plus uh, be the bell state. So it's a two qubit, two -qubit state. state. And the self-loop gadget on the s and j qubits of a state psi uh, by this bell state uh, phi plus is defined as follows. Uh, here, uh, this these two states uh, psi uh, sub i j super zero zero and psi sub i j super one one are states of n minus one qubits. When setting the s and j qubits of the original state uh, psi to zero zero and one one respectively. We assume that uh, the original state psi uh, is a state of n qubits. So after self loop, we will get a state of n minus two qubits from a state of n qubits. So why we why we are interested in uh, these two states, uh, the the phi plus state and the zero state. Uh, first, 
the, the, the phi plus state is synonymous with the binary equality signature in the Holland framework, and it's always available because it means to connect two edges. The single qubit state zero is easy to be realized from any state of ordinary, ordinary number of qubits under some mild condition. So remember that in our dichotomy, we assume that the signature of ordinary is available, so we can realize this uh, single qubit state zero from that signature from that ordinary signature. The following uh, quantum entanglement result is a key lemma to prove our dichotomy results. So we consider an an unqubit state uh, that exhibits multiple entanglement. And uh, so basically by performing uh, self loops and the projections uh, with these two states, we can finally get a genuinely entangled three qubit state or a Greenberg Horn uh, Zellinger type four qubit state, or we can realize the state the, the single qubit state one. In the last two, ca two cases, uh, once the the once this four qubit state or the single qubit state one are re is realizable, then we can give we can prove a dichotomy for Horn problems uh, by give a reduction from some problems where we already we already have some dichotomy results. So we only need to consider the case that a genuinely entangled three qubit state is realizable. Then we need to compute the partial trace for this three qubit state, and such a computation involves the computation of the of the complex inner product, and uh, such a computation can be simulated by gadget constructions in the Horn framework only for real valued states. So this is why our dichotomy result is restricted to real valued states. But our entanglement results hold for complex valued states. If we want to uh, further prove a dichotomy for all real valued Horn problems without assuming uh, an ordinary signature, then we need to consider the following problem. We need to consider that while the multi-parted entanglement is preserved under the self-loops uh, by the Bell state phi plus alone, remember that uh, now in this case, we do not have the single qubit state zero anymore. And however, the answer is no for this question, and, and it's even no, it's no even if that we uh, consider self-loops by all four Bell states. So these are these four uh, Bell states, they are of uh, interest in quantum theory, and in Horn frameworks, uh, these four uh, states are somewhat uh, easily realizable in the Holland framework. And this is a self-loop uh, by these uh, states. Now we introduce the following Bell property. Uh, for a genuinely entangled state, we see that it satisfies the Bell property if by performing self-loop on this state uh, uh, psi by some Bell state phi, uh, we get a state which is a tensor product of Bell states. And we see it satisfies the strong Bell property if by performing self-loop on this state psi by a Bell state phi, uh, we get a state which is a tensor product of the Bell state phi. So here, this phi is exactly the same Bell state that is used to do the self-loop. And and we can we found that there are states that set there are states that satisfies uh, the Bell property and the strong Bell property. Here we first give an eight qubit state that satisfies the strong Bell property. This state is of this form and it has many interesting properties. Uh, like for example, uh, the support of this uh, state is an a fine linear a fun subspace. And it, one can check that it satisfies the strong Bell property. Bell property. And also, there is another state, uh, another six qubit state in this form that satisfies uh, the, the Bell property. So, due to the existence of these two states, uh, the multi-party entanglement is not preserved under self-loops by uh, Bell states. Now, let's summarize our results. Uh, first, we use knowledge from Holland problems to prove uh, new quantum entanglement results. We show that multi-party entanglement is preserved under projections onto zero and one. And this result can be applied to the inductive classification of slot classes. And then we applied our quantum entanglement, entanglement results back to uh, the complexity uh, classification of Holland problems. Uh, we proved that the academy for real valued Holland problems where an ordinary signature is available. We also found two particular states, six qubit states and eight qubit states, uh, that satisfies the Bell property. Uh, these states are obstacles to a full dichotomy for real-valued Holland problems. 
Well, in fact, this obstacle was just uh, uh, solved, and a full dichotomy for real-valued Holland problems was just approved. Here is a partial graph for the com complexity classification program for Holland problems. Uh, in this paper, we proved that dichotomy for real-valued Holland problems where an uh, ordinary signature is available, and it was it was generalized to the real-valued Holland problems. Thanks for watching this video.